Hello everybody. Our next camera is a Leica M3. This will be a short review. There's tons of information uh, out there. It's kind of a legendary camera that people drool over, so there's a lot of information available. Uh, it was made from 1954 to 1967, and then I've read um, that there was a green-bodied version of it made in 1968. I have not verified that. It was the first uh, Leica that used the uh, M-mount bayonet instead of the 39mm uh, thread mount. This one can be adapted to use the older uh, thread mount lenses. My original uh, notes for doing a video said this one's in good shape mechanically for being so ugly and then while dorking around with it getting ready to do the video I managed to jam the shutter. For some reason the take up spool is not resetting the film counter so I'm trying to decide if I have the guts to tear into it myself or if I need to send it off. So anyway um, it was also the first Leica that had a combined viewfinder and rangefinder. The older ones that you see, they have two windows, the separate rangefinder and viewfinder. Um, this one brings up different frame lines depending on what lens you have mounted. And apparently there were a lot of variations. This particular one, let's see if I can get this right, if I have a lens on it, it brings up the 50 millimeter and 90 millimeter lines with the uh, frame line preview here. And if I don't have a lens on it, it brings up the 50 millimeter frame lines and the 135 millimeter frame lines. Uh, apparently there were a lot of variations. I don't know if that's normal behavior or not. The, uh, the earliest uh, model of this, the 1954 M3, um, didn't have this lever for bringing up different frame lines to see, you know, how your subject was going to be framed. Do you need to move in or out, switch lenses? The frame lines in the viewfinder, they actually move. It does for real parallax compensation as you get closer to your subject. It doesn't just have, you know, a set of lines and say, well, if you're shooting close, anything above this will be cut off. It actually moves and shows you what you see is what you get. It has a really wide base uh, rangefinder baseline that's you know for doing the triangulation. So in general, wider is better. Uh, the viewfinder the viewfinder is really bright and it gives you 0.92 uh, x. You know it'll show you nine tenths in the viewfinder. I did manage to score and I bought it separately. Uh, a dual range 50 millimeter Summicron goes from f2 to f16. The serial number of the lens dates it to about 1958. The body's from 1959, and I'll show you that real quick. I have not shot a roll using the close up attachment. It has this lock here for close focus. You pull out and then it goes on the other side of this little push out here but then you can't focus until you put the goggles on it in fact the little ball bearing won't push down until that's moved over and then you're set for close focusing because close focus on most of these is about a meter um, so that's nice scoring one of these lenses that actually has the matched goggles is quite a find. Uh, it's not the original case, this is a Canon. Film loading can be a little bit of a pain until you get used to it, unless you're used to Leica. So you unlock the bottom, pull it out like that, and then you take up spool. You gotta have this, so don't lose it. Um, and it's got a little clip here you put your film leader in that and then it does have a nice diagram and it also has the back opening door which is supposed to be tucked in because the bottom 
holds that in place. That's to help make sure you're getting your film wound and that you're hitting the sprocket holes of the film counter mechanism. And one thing that's kind of cool, this side is sort of a semicircle and the other side is a circle. So you can tell which side of the bottom is supposed to go there. There are also um, sink sockets on the back, one for electronic and then one for flash bulbs. And it's got a little lightning bolt here between the 30 and the 60. It actually sinks at a 50th. And amazingly, I got this little adapter that brings it out to a normal PC sink socket. So that is pretty cool find. I got lucky there. This doesn't do anything but act as a film reminder. Um, other things I'll show you real quick. Self timer lever. I was monkeying with that. That may be why it jammed. I should know better than to touch that on an old camera. And then when you're in rewind mode, this little switch goes down and then it frees it up. And to rewind, you pull that up enough to clear the top plate of the body and then you can rewind. Some people hate that. It's not bad because it pops up. Some of them you're just sitting there cranking and cranking and cranking. This one's not bad and there are aftermarket cranks that just sort of clamp on to the knurled knob here. It makes it a lot easier. We'll see if I shoot with it enough maybe I'll splurge and get one of those. Anyway, I will look through the viewfinder but I'm going to fix this guy or get it fixed and then run some more through it and I'll see you then.